Brian Windhorst says Kevin Durant is ramping up and is expected to play a few minutes today in Team USA's final tune-up before the Olympics, this against Germany. Paul, how much of a difference will KD make? Make a huge difference, Skip. I mean, he's he's been one of the best players internationally of all time. Yeah. I mean, you talk about, about one of the great shooters. He's going to add versatility to them. He's going to add shot making, which they desperately needed last game. And, and he'll bring a calm, you know, uh, to this team, I believe, on the offensive end. You know, when it looks like they're stagnant at times and, you know, can't get a bucket. He's the one guy out of all the guys, even though LeBron's the all-time leading scorer, this guy right here is just nearly or just purely unstoppable. Like, when you need a bucket, you go to Kevin Durant. And so, only concern of mine is, you know, do you start him? Do you bring him off the bench? Only concern of mine is their chemistry isn't all the way there yet. And then you bring in a guy who hasn't had a lot of practice time, yep. hasn't had a lot of game time to kind of get into game shape, which is a difference from practice. So, hopefully, you know, he can contribute and make a difference because... They look shaky last game, so I don't oh, know how it's going to be. Come over to my side of the fence. They look shaky, so hopefully he does. I mean, it shouldn't even have to come down to say we need Kevin Durant mm. based on what they already got. But ultimately, after watching that last game, it's like they need him. Yeah. They need him, and I'm, I'm like you. You shouldn't even need LeBron with all the talent that they got out here. But True. they need him. Yep. <laughs> they need him, it looks like, because the world has shown we've caught up. The world has shown, like I said earlier, they're not afraid. And they need all they can help, all the help they can get at this point, because they haven't been convincing enough for me. They haven't covered the spread a couple of times. And I know a 40-point spread and a Serbia, a 20-point spread, they couldn't. But they need all the bodies they can get. And I'm a little concerned. Hopefully, they can work them in and get the chemistry right. Mm. and they win go. Uh, look, I, I think Kevin will eventually take Devin Booker's start, spot in the starting lineup. He won't today, obviously, but I think that is eventually what will happen there. And I don't worry about fit. Kevin Durant is the best of any NBA superstar at fitting in in a new place. Absolutely. He's changed teams a lot. We've I talked about that. that. And in every time, he needs no run-up. Mm -hmm. In the first game, he looks great. He's got the most FIBA experience of anyone on that team. Mm -hmm. He's already the leading scorer for American men in the history of Team USA. He has the chance to be the first American man basketball player. I want to keep saying man because the women have done mm. it already. Uh -huh. But uh, American man to win four gold medals in basketball. He is just such a natural talent for this kind of game, this yeah. Olympic style of game. Mm -hmm. And I also don't worry about the fit because he is on the older side, playing with, as you point out, players on the older side. They've played together in a bunch of all-star games. They've played together in training camps. A lot of these guys played with him on the last Olympic team. So, so I don't worry about the chemistry issues there either. I think he's going to be a huge asset for them. And I think it was smart to let him take the time mm. to heal from this calf injury because there's no need in friendlies to rush him back. But I think he's going to be a huge presence. We're going to be talking about the entire Olympics. Okay. I'm going to mention this quickly and just once. Rachel and I went back and forth a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago about it, but Kevin has a calf pull mm -hmm. that is plaguing him, and if you've ever had one, it just won't leave you be. And what happened in the finals when he had a calf pull and rushed back to try to save Golden State? The Achilles tore. I'm knocking on wood because I don't even want to bring it up, but I know that lurks in Kevin's psyche as we speak because he's an older player now and he went through all that. The rehab is endless for the Achilles and he missed the whole next season because of it. And he's being probably overcautious because you don't want to push off too hard. So I'll be very intrigued to see how he looks, how gingerly he sort of steps and, and plays. Because to both your points, he's it. I mean, he is the ultimate difference maker on this whole roster where he changes everything. He changed everything last time. And when they got in trouble against Australia last time, Kevin just said, I, I got it. Mm -hmm. Dame missed a couple of free throws. And Kevin said, next time down, you know, when they inbounded, they're going to get fouled. It's like Kevin said, no, just give me the ball. Right. And he went down there and went swish, swish, and the game was over. So the point is... He's it. He, he should be 
the most qualified to, to lead us to gold. And yet, I, I get what you're saying about chemistry, but we're so late in the game now. This is it. It's going to yeah. start yeah. a week from yeah. yesterday. They play Serbia yeah. for real, right? Right. Group play. And then three days later, they play South Sudan for real. And then a couple of days later, three days, I think it is, they play Puerto Rico for real to get out of group play, to get into the single elimination. So we're, we're, it's upon us. And it's funny, your point about you can close your eyes and pick five, I, I don't disagree with it, but the, the hard part is which five? I mean, which, because you do have egos to juggle and you, you do have some guys play better with each other than other guys do. Mm -hmm. So you got to figure that out because whoever, w when you get down to games that w where you get down to single elimination, you, you better pick your five that you start with and finish with. Pr pretty much where you got to stick with, you know, dance with who brung you, as they said mm -hmm. back in Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. what, who, who gets you here? Who's, who's going to get you home the best? And obviously, Kevin, I, I like was Devin Booker. He would step right in for mm -hmm. Devin probably against Serbia next Sunday. I'm pretty sure if, if they see enough of him Tonight. here. Yeah. But it's funny, with all the Kawhi controversy, I, I told you when, when they finally sent Kawhi home, it actually, I hated it for Kawhi because he really wanted to play, but it's actually a blessing for Steve Kerr because it's just one superstar down where you, you don't have to fit Kawhi in because mm -hmm. he would be in the starting lineup and now you'd be saying, well, do we tell yeah. Kawhi he's got to sit down for a, you know, he's got to watch for a while? Look, it's why they yeah. replaced yeah. Kawhi Leonard, yeah. who is a two-time Finals MVP, with... with Derek White, who doesn't even play the same position. Nope. Because they had a log jam there. They and did. Especially with the way, again, that they're playing Bam and yeah. AD together. And this was a way to take down the ego factor, mm. to take down the sort of whose minutes is he going to get factor, that kind of stuff, and also bring in a very good defensive player. Um, to me, there's just no question about Kevin's chemistry fit. I, I just well, I don't just, see it sends, having a problem. He, he fits with everybody. He fits he just, with yeah, everybody. He's the most plug-and-play yeah, player he, he, yeah. that no, he's there not, is probably is in he, history. Is, NBA say, history. Is, is he the most so. plug-and-play like, superstar in NBA history? You can I think put him he with anybody. Yeah. Because it's like we always say, well, LeBron needs shooters around him. Right. He yeah. needs this he type does. of players around him. Well, you know, you need... Magic Johnson needs this these guys who can get out on the break and finish yep. and there are all these things. But with KD in the history, if I say, let me put KD on the team with Michael Jordan. Oh, he'll score 30. Yep. You feel like, let me put on, him on, on the team. On a few shots. Uh, yeah, let me put him out there with Shaq. Oh, he'll still get 30. Let me he put will. out there, let me team him up with LeBron. Yep. Well, I still feel like he'll get 30. Yep. I mean, he doesn't... By the way, what he's averaging just... in the last two Olympics, he's also the reigning Olympic MVP. Yeah. That's yeah. how good he is. Yeah. Because he's not a ball-dominant player. He can play on the ball. He can play off the ball. You can put him in a post. He can spot up. That's what makes him so easy to plug and play. You know, where certain guys who are on the ball, you're like, well, I don't know if I can play him with these two ball-dominant players because it, the fit just not there with him plug and play. And that's why he's he's a difference maker and that's why they desperately need him. And I shouldn't be, we shouldn't be happen to say they need Kevin Durant to win gold. But based on what we've seen, especially in the last game versus South Sudan, they have trouble scoring and they're shooting it was a problem. They're definitely going to need him on yep. both ends of the court. So you did bring up the point earlier in the show and I'm going to reiterate it. LeBron is older, obviously, mm -hmm. and Steph is getting older, and so is Kevin Durant. They're all mid-30s. Okay, all right, and go, going into upper 30s, mm -hmm. right? Does that concern you at all? Because all of a sudden, when, when you get out of group play, the games start coming fast and furiously. Yeah. As Every you other know. night. Yeah. It concerns me playing them all at the same time. But like I said, the, the weaknesses and the chink in the armor I saw is the rotations on defense. Now, as older players, they're not as spry. They're not as, as quick to get out to shooters. And if one team gets hot because that's what it's going to take. In order to beat the U.S., you got to hope the U.S. is not hot from three, and you got to be on fire from three-point land. If you can make about 15 threes, you got a shot to beat the U.S. And, you know, the way the international game is played now, they're going to hoist up about 50 threes. Yes. So you're going to have a chance to make 15 of those. If you can get a couple easy ones, hope the U.S. is, in the, is not shooting the ball well, you got to have a chance. I think the best, I think what U.S. has to do, they have to play faster. Like, 
you know, almost like Halliburton out there, yeah. kind of pushing the pace a little bit. that comes from defense also, by the yeah, way. That's if you true. play bad defense, yep, then all of a sudden, you're in a much different situation than if you can be a transition team. Yeah, but yeah, they got to really transition their defense and turn defense into offense. Yeah. yeah if they can do that, they'll, they'll be fine.